How's everyone doing? It's Greg Serio, your friendly neighborhood robot coach, here with another lesson. So at this point, your clawbot should look something like this. Basic clawbot, you finished it, you watched our first three videos, and now we're going to show you what to do with it. There's several things that you can do from here, but we're just going to start you off with some simple resources that gets you started in the world of robotics competitions. Now, what is a robotics competition? simple you take you and your team that built this robot to compete against another team of students that built their robot in simulated competitions where there's a table and then there's moving parts on the table and your robot has to perform tasks for points the more points you earn the more chances you have of winning the first part I want to tell you about is the competition itself so there's a, a nonprofit called the REC Foundation, the Robotics Education Competition Foundation. I'm gonna go to roboticseducation.org to see what the REC Foundation's all about. I'm just gonna go to their site and do what you should do, read their mission statement. Their mission is the Robotics Education and Competition Foundation's mission is to increase students' interest and involvement in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics by engaging students in hands-on, affordable, and sustainable robotics engineering programs. Meaning, the REC Foundation is there to help you, the student, or mentor, or maybe you're a parent that wants to give your kid the best shot. The REC Foundation exists because they're in so many different communities and each community is a little bit different. So check out their website to learn more and find out if there's a program near you that you can just go get plugged in at. Now that you kind of know what the REC Foundation is, the biggest thing that they do is vex competitions. I wouldn't say the biggest thing, it's the biggest to me, but we're teaching you what to do with this robot. So the next part of what you can do in searching on what you're gonna do to level up your skills and level up your robot, just go to vexrobotics.com. And what are you gonna find there? You're gonna find all of these different competition platforms as well as products. So more than just the competition, this robot has software, programming, resources, different designs, and you find it all on vexrobotics.com. And you'll see on the top, there's VEX, and then it says 1, 2, 3, GO, IQ, V5. These are all different sizes and shapes of robots. For this video, this is an IQ, the Clawbot IQ specifically. So I'm gonna go on VEXrobotics.com and click IQ. Now we've been here before when you saw those actual build instructions for this robot, but it has so many other things that you can look at on there. There's a drop down under VEX IQ that says competition that tells you more about the rules of this. Because every year the game changes, but all you have to do is change your robot every year. So every year you get to fine tune your skills and you just have to go check out here. Maybe look at past competitions to see how other robots did it. But now we're here, the first thing they have is the road to VEX Worlds. Every year when you compete, if you win, you might have a chance to go to Vex Worlds, which is hosted in a different city every year. But to check that out, just keep searching. As I scroll down after I clicked IQ, you'll see the Vex IQ Challenge, Rise Above. That's this year's challenge. And this year's challenge has various stackable items, and your robot is going to have to find a way to stack them and move them around this competition field. But if you want to see what that competition looks like and the rules for it, looks like they already have a short 2 minute 48 second video on that same page where it just shows you what this year's competition is. I keep stressing this competition because it's what you're doing this for. It's how you can network and grow relationships with other teams and maybe one day you might end up working with these people as different companies hire you because of the skills that you gained by building this robot. So as you're searching these competitions, that's what you should keep your open mind to in understanding that the why behind your building this robot is just as important as the build itself. It's gonna take you a while to get the competition part, but what it won't take you long to do is learning how to program. And that's where also another great online resource provided by Vex Robotics is their virtual reality programming and the resources that they give you on how to learn programming. 
Go ahead and pull this out because we shoved it aside during the other builds in the first three videos. But now it's time to slow down and take a look and learn. Grab the one with the orange binder, my favorite color, and flip it open. And then you're gonna see this guy, Kiwi. Hello, Kiwi. Nice to meet you. Hello, Greg. Nice to meet you. After I look at Kiwi, he says, I'm Kiwi. I'm your professional Vex helper. So I'm gonna flip over and it gives you some basic instructions on what to do with all these electronical components. So just thumb through this first and get to the end because this is just as important and that's gonna help you program the brain of this robot and this controller. But I'm gonna go ahead and flip to page 15 using built-in programs. It tells you how to access your program. It's gonna be better just to follow these instructions because it's already set up that way for you so you can get used to how this brain works before you learn how to program it. Once you finish the steps on page 15 and you get to see how this is already pre-programmed, then you can understand it before you go to this next piece, which is the vr.vex.com, virtual reality programming. What is programming? What, what is machine language? It's a language that your robot speaks. This robot speaks the language that Vex provides for you to learn the basics of programming. Basically, your brain is the same as this brain, but the only difference is, is your brain is way more complex. And if you look at how you move your fingers, your brain is telling it to do that. The robot can't think without you. It's very basic. It's never going to be as smart as you, so you have to tell it exactly what to do. So an example that I like to think about is, you know, the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. We love peanut butter jelly sandwich. Everyone does it differently, but how do you make it? Whenever I go into the kitchen and someone tells me, hey, get the peanut butter and put it on the bread, so do I take the bread and then put the peanut butter jar just on top? No, I gotta open the lid, take a spoon, scoop it out. I gotta do all of that, but my brain thinks about it automatically. Your robot doesn't have the ability to do that. So think about it, if you wanna make a right-hand turn while you're driving a car, you gotta turn the wheel. Your brain is still driving that. <laughs> you gotta teach this robot via a program. And you do that based on the simulator. Once you get to vr.vex.com, in the top right hand corner, there's a little thing called the playground. Click that, and then it'll load a little grid. That grid that it loads is a simulated clawbot. The base looks just like what you're seeing here on the virtual reality. The only difference is, is this allows you to fail repeatedly without failing individually and wasting all that time. So hurry up and hop on vr.vex.com and fail, and you can see how to change it, how to make it work. This awesome person named Ashley Phipps that works for the REC Foundation gave me this example. You go brush your teeth, right? When you go in there, do you take your toothbrush and then someone instructs you to do it, say your mom says, go brush your teeth. Do you take that and just place it on top of your toothbrush? Do you take the whole tube of toothpaste when you're putting your toothpaste on your toothbrush? Or do you twist open the cap? Do you hold it this way? Do you spread it on there and then brush your teeth? All those little steps is what you have to tell your robot here and you're able to do that at vr.vex.com. When you go to vr.vex.com, it's because you've already gone through that little purple section, you kind of understand how your brain works, and now you're really wanting to try some programming. This is where you just go ahead and get started, because this is a simulated version of the same software that's available for download on Vex Robotics website as well. Just follow the instructions. There's a ton of them, just follow them and give it a shot. We're gonna start by seeing this over here in the right hand corner, Playground. Go ahead and click that. It'll launch your little playground and it looks like this. If you notice this little robot right here, you have a couple of camera angles right here. We'll just click this one. Notice that looks very similar to your Clawbot drive base because it is. 
it's the same thing. So this is a simulated version of what's sitting right next to you. So I'm gonna click the overhead view again, and then I'm gonna kind of move this over here. But you see this over here, it says, when started, a little yellow tab. Now, I am no expert at this programming whatsoever, but every machine out there speaks a different language. This is the language that your VEX IQ bot, your actual Clawbot IQ speaks. So we have to tell it exactly what to do in a row. So I'm gonna show you drag and drop stuff. You can drag whatever you want. But I suggest you kind of think out what you want this robot to do. Because there's a bunch of different commands, as you can see. Now, your robot isn't as smart as you, so it's, it's not gonna be able to just do what you want it to without you being specific. So I'm gonna drag this over here, and you'll see it drops Click. even makes a little clicky noise. Where it says, when started, drive forward. Now watch when I just tell it to drive forward. Drive forward, robot. Play. It's reading that code. And now we're driving forward. But it's now still driving forward. And it's, oh, now it's up the wall. It's busted now. <laughs> it didn't stop. So now we're just going to click the reset. You don't want it to drive off the table during a competition, do you? No. So now I'm going to take this, this just basic code, because remember, I am not good at this, but it doesn't ever stop me from trying. And I'm going to drag this over here. And then you see where it says MM? It's not 3M where you get respirators or M and M's, it's millimeters. But I'm from Florida and I like inches. So I'm gonna do 20 inches. This is gonna drive my robot forward 20 inches now. Let's see what happens. Oh, what do you know? It drove it forward 20 inches. Now, just to give you a little bit more of a challenge, if you see in the top right hand corner of your playground right here, it says activities. Go ahead and click that. It opens up a new page, VEX Code VR Activities. And if you're just like every other kid I know, um, you don't really listen to instructions well, unless there's a video. There's a ton of virtual reality videos here that you can compete on and just start clicking and trying things like I know you guys love how to learn that way. So when you say new to VEX Code VR, <laughs> I'm just gonna click it. And then it gives you detailed step-by-steps, more information, more resources than you can think of that simulates exactly what you want to be able to do when you're programming your robot for competition. So I'm going to go back to our vex or vr.vex.com. You've seen a little quick little sample of why you should be very specific in all of the steps, maybe write them out ahead of time work with the mentor, trial and error, etc. But over here in activities is where you're gonna have a lot of fun, learn some stuff, and then apply it immediately when you download the real version of VEX code. So the value of vr.vex.com is you get to simulate a failure in a very safe environment. So when you actually go to try it on your actual robot, you're at least a little bit prepared. You're probably still gonna fail, but everyone learns through failure. It's the best way to learn. I should know because I have failed more than most have tried. So because of that, I have learned an immense amount of stuff that adds value to my life. I'm here to tell you just about these simple resources on how to get started. Because after this, it's really up to you. When you go forward in robotics, there's no wrong way because you just learn and it's just really important to keep moving. Never get stuck in a certain spot and if you do, let it sit for a little bit and look at something different. If you're getting frustrated programming, maybe just pause for a second and go watch some competition videos. Go, look, go hop on YouTube and see how other teams are doing it. You know, just Google Vex IQ robot frustrations and I'm sure someone else has gone through it too. So it's really important for you to just continue to learn by trying and doing and failing and repeating. 
And that's today's lesson from Greg Sirio, your friendly neighborhood robot coach. And I hope that you have an awesome week while you build your clawbot. Like and subscribe to this video so you can stay up to date with all the other stuff that we work on. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Building a robot is so much fun. Putting it together can make it run. I put you together and I made you run. Well, roll. <laughs>